Hi, welcome to the Cyberling Mansion, built by industrialist Monroe Cyberling. And home of the Howard County Museum. Hi, I'm Lucy. And I'm Josh, and we'll be your host for the next few moments. Howard County officially came into existence in 1844. It was a dark, damp, and malarial land. But the wetlands were drained, and agriculture became the basis for Howard County's early economy. In 1876, an event in an Indiana town 50 miles away had unknown portent for Kokomo. Coal miners digging near Eaton, Indiana, struck something, and a foul odor and a loud noise rose from underground. They didn't understand it, so they plugged up the hole and went off to dig somewhere else. Six years later, people near Findlay, Ohio had a similar experience, but they realized what they had natural gas. The people of Eaton remembered their little hell hole, which they decided to reopen. The escaping gas ignited, shooting flames 12 feet in the air and kicking off what became known as the Indiana Gas Boom. Before it was over, more than 5,000 gas wells were drilled throughout East Central Indiana. Here in Howard County, the people heard about the gas wells in Muncie. The first Kokomo well was sunk in 1886 by a Pennsylvania outfit that was hired to keep drilling until they hit gas, came out in China, or ran out of money, whichever came first. The gas came first, and more wells followed. In 1888, a group calling itself the Kokomo Board of Trade was advertising 10 wells and a total capacity of 46 million cubic feet of gas per day. The headline read, Kokomo, the great manufacturing center of Indiana. Quite a change for the little Howard County farming town. Natural gas was so abundant, it became fairly common practice to just stick a pipe in the ground and light the gas that shot out of the top. Giant torches called flambeaux burned nonstop. The largest well in the state may have been on Fred Schrader's land, just east of Kokomo. It was said that flames shot 50 feet in the air before they could be tamed. The gas-fired kilns, which turned out building blocks for many Kokomo landmarks, including the Diamond Plate Glass Works and the Cyberling Mansion. The Trenton gas field was the largest natural gas discovery up until that time, with an area of more than 5,000 square miles. Howard County was on its far west edge, a geographical happenstance that forever changed life in the community. The Kokomo Natural Gas Company began supplying gas to residences and businesses in January of 1887. Home users paid a monthly fee based on the number of stoves they had, not how much they used. There was no financial incentive to limit use, so people were careless and wasteful. They thought the gas would last forever. The gas was abundant, easily acquired, and inexpensive, and manufacturers took notice. Some manufacturers worked out ways to move the gas from the wells to their plants. Elwood Haynes, a name you'll hear later, came to Greentown from Portland, Indiana, another gas boom town, to supervise construction of one long gas pipe to supply factories up in Chicago. Other manufacturers moved their plants to be near the wells, including Monroe Cyberling. The manager of a successful straw board factory near Akron, Ohio, Cyberling came in 1887 to set up another plant to manufacture that type of cardboard. After a couple of years, he sold the straw board plant in favor of a new project, going into business with another Midwestern entrepreneur, Colonel A.L. Conger, to manufacture plate glass. The natural gas wells provided an opportunity to make large quantities at much lower cost of the architectural plate glass needed by the nation's burgeoning construction industry. Cyberling was in charge of building and running the new plant to be known as the Diamond Plate Glass Company. He established the largest, most technically advanced glass factory in the country on a lot between Markland and Vail Avenues on Kokomo's east side. And Cyberling built this beautiful home, which is on the National Register of Historic Places, and beautifully features Romanesque and Queen Anne architecture. Cyberling and Conger weren't the only entrepreneurs in glass. Charles Henry, who had come from France to start an art glass company in New York, visited Kokomo in 1888. He quickly decided to establish a plant here to manufacture art glass for the stained glass windows and shades so popular at the time. 
His company, the Opalescent Glassworks, is still in business. Other gas boom businesses included Kokomo Wood Pulp and Paper, Rockford Bit Company, Great Western Pottery, Kokomo Fence Machine, Kokomo Wire and Nail, Coles Greenhouse, Kokomo Rubber, and Globe Stove and Range. In 1893, a group of local businessmen formed the Kokomo Enterprise Company to promote new manufacturing operations in the county. They offered free gas and free land to entrepreneurs who would establish their factories in Howard County. By the turn of the century, Indiana State Geologist was warning that the gas field, so abundant, so huge, so inexhaustible, was indeed finite. The pressure was dropping, the gas would soon be inaccessible. A price had to be paid for those extravagant flambeaux, the waste, the unrestricted use. The boom became a bust in 1902. However, all was not lost in Kokomo. Howard County had a transportation infrastructure and plenty of manufacturing space and skilled workers. During the boom, the county's population more than quadrupled. People had come from all over the world. These were people who made things and solved problems. Howard County became a crucible of new ideas, ideas that led to new products and new industries. One of the biggest and most famous was the auto industry, built with the help of people like Elwood Haynes, Elmer and Edgar Apperson, and J.D. Maxwell. Bill Swern developed modern techniques for manufacturing auto tires at Kokomo Rubber. George Kingston designed and made carburetors. John Frederick built a steel company. Elwood Haynes also founded a company that made steel alloys of unparalleled strength. The years have passed, but we still live in a community built by the gas boom. Many of its buildings still remain, and some, like this one, are still in use. The auto industry has been through changes, but remains. When the Haynes and Apperson plants shut down, Chrysler and General Motors came in using the same buildings and the skilled and inventive employees. Mr. Haynes' alloy business is still going, having provided high-tech metals for two world wars, a race to the moon, and now the airline and oil drilling industries. Kokomo Opalescent Glass still manufactures its beautiful products for glass artists and architectural designers around the world. The farm town that Kokomo was became the industrial powerhouse that Kokomo is. We hope you'll enjoy your visit to the Howard County Museum, and we know you'll find many more exciting stories here.